Stanley, written by Ryan and Fox. It's surprising to learn all this history about my old line that I never knew before. Take Stanley, our number two, for instance. Peter, Sam and I were raised on stories about him and his fall from grace. Only today we found out what truly happened to make him into a generator at the back of our old shed. And needless to say, it was a bit of a surprise, finding out the full story after all this time. Oh well, at least it shut that horrid little red monster up for a while. Anyway, here's what happened when Grandpuff told us all about Stanley. The next morning, Mike was still parked on his truck by the little engines' yard. The little engines had already been steamed up when he awoke, and Duncan had already left for the first train. He saw Duke was waiting patiently, and both Sir Handel and Peter Sam were with him. Nosy little tyke! Oh, there's nothing wrong with knowing about your own wagon, I think you're just sore after last night. <laughs> the way he spoke to me, rather arrogant, I must say, it reminds me of Stanley. And who dare I ask? Mike glared at Duke, curious as to whether this was another engine from their old railway. He was a very rude, boisterous and self-sure engine who couldn't see the tracks before him. He... <laughs> I'll tell the story, as I knew the truth more than either you young men will. Your room, Mr. Handel, would not suit his grace at all. Now be quiet and let me be in. Um, with a little confession. The engines listened patiently. Mike was curious, but Sir Handel and Peter Sam were confused. After all, surely they knew this story off by heart. Well, I will agree that he was obnoxious at any engine, but uh, the manager didn't take away his wheels just for derailing repeatedly. There was more to it than that, and to be fair, it wasn't all poor Stanley's fault. Peter Sam and Sir Handel looked at each other in astonishment. They had been brought up for many years on the story of Stanley's behaviour, and now he had been swept away. They didn't know what to say. Duke paused to let them acknowledge it with a soft sigh. <laughs> Look at their faces. Aren't they amusing? I recall the manager coming to me one morning, a few days before he arrived. So tell us what really happened then. I am. Um, don't be so rude. <coughs> We're expecting a new engine in the next few days. We hope he'll be able to help you keep the main line running. Although, I must be honest, we are not good for the interpretation of him. We bought him cheaply from the War Department. He could be a complete loose cannon. Yes, sir. I'll do my best to help him. When he arrived, he was sure of himself, to be certain. You just be careful. You're not in a war, sir, no. You need to be boisterous. Hey, bud, you needn't tell me how to run this line. I ran through trenches and over bad track. I steamed through mud, rain, and snow without a hitch. Now then, where these darn trucks at? Uh, he won't last long. I can sense it in my friends. Oh yes, I know his type. Cheaply built engine built at the war department for an unshovelly run track in trenches and battlefields. They were brought over from America by the score that weren't expected to last very long. Now the war's over, they have to be disposed of. And railways like ours will bear the brunt of them. No, cheap quality. Cheaply built and cheaply scrapped if he doesn't mind himself. Later that very day, the manager came looking flustered. 
Duke, I need you to take a gang down the line. That dreaded new engine has gone and derailed himself completely. On my way, sir. All young engines do make mistakes, and so Duke was eager to help and not be so harsh on him. They easily re-railed Stanley, and he was pulled back to the shed. Duke spoke to him severely that night. This won't do, Lauren. You'll be on a passenger duty by my side, and we must keep the trains running efficiently. This up like this would not suit his grace at all. Listen, buddy, I'll do things my way, okay? In the day, if we derailed only once on a trip, it was an achievement. <sighs> Oh dear. A few weeks later, I showed in the mountain road. Once was enough, and it made our manager unhappy, I can tell you not. Sure he didn't get one, miss. That would have been an achievement. Oh, he did. It was a lovely spring morning. Duke and Stanley were due to take a passenger train double-headed into the mountains. All right, Stanley, today the day. Go slowly, pay attention, and keep your eyes on the road. We'd really appreciate your helping on further passenger work. But manager won't trust you unless you can show you're much more enough. While you were pottering about your sedentary little mining line, I was racing through the war-torn battlefields of the continent. Maturity. Ha! Simply made. Simply won. So away we went. We got part of your railway now runs, Mike, without any incident. I was hoping that perhaps Stanley would prove himself. Oh, well, talk about counting your wheels before they're full, you know. He doesn't seem as half as bad as you made him out to be, Grandpa. But he was. Duke and Stanley reached the workstation and connected in good time. With on an easy corner, disaster struck. <laughs> Darn track. Look, buddy, you pushed me, alright? This track ain't fit for a wagon to roll with, let alone engines like us. Now get me back on the track right now. Oh, now we'll be late. Duke, we better do something. We can't just leave that infernal engine there to see and swear. It was fortunate that a gang of workmen were on board. They quickly jacked up Stanley, and Duke was able to pull him back onto the rails with almighty effort. Gee, finally! Come on, don't hold back, Gramps! You'll make us late! Uh, you infinite beast! Yeah, yeah, save the complaining. Soon they reached the top station. Stanley was quickly steamed out of sight, and the manager was on the platform. An excellent job, Duke. All reliable, that's you. That wretched engine can seriously jeopardize today's service. Thank you indeed. Not at all. He's very certainly wouldn't be approving for such bad behavior. The manager was not so jovial with Stanley, however. Bad bug. I knew there was a catch with such cheap price on these scrap heap engines. Stanley, you are, to be blunt, a disgrace. There's no way I can trust you by yourself on our railway's passenger service. You'll be taken back to the sheds and left there. Perhaps a few days out of action might make you consider the state of things. Yeah, yeah. Fine, sir. Whatever you say. The days passed, and Duke and the other engines struggled to keep up the railway's work. One morning, Duke saw that Stanley was being lit up. Mind how you go, young'un. You've been put onto the goods workings. I have a feeling you're on your last chance. In your dreams, Gramps. I know you need me. You could say, um, important to the railway. Uh, don't say I didn't warn you. But Stanley didn't want to see sense. He was happy how he was. And as you can guess, he never fared much better on the goods work. He continued to derail, and those were frequently spilled across the line as a result of his negligence. It's all well and good to have one or two accidents, but not as many. Listen, but back in the States, we couldn't give a dime for a few spills. Well, we do here. Yeah, so I've noticed. You should calm down and relax. Try getting that from manager. In the end, the manager had him set to work regularly on the horse and cart, a slow mixed traffic service, which covered the line at a steady pace. His logic behind this was that Stanley would not have any reason to hurry, therefore lowering the probability of derailment. 
But this is Stanley we're talking about. Easy, Stanley, easy! It's a tight bend, so we don't want to go too fast! Easy! Yeah, you might enjoy spending hours shunting in the station, but we need to make up the time somehow. Well, of course we do, but not here. There's plenty of time left to cover, so just slow down and calm yourself! But Stanley took no notice and kept on going. They just rounded a bend when all of a sudden a flock of sheep came into view in the middle of the line ahead. Oh, right. Break! Break! Stanley's speed and the weight of the trucks behind him meant they couldn't stop as effectively as they would have liked. The crew gave it their all, but by the sound of things it was a little too much. True to form, Stanley left the rails and stopped inches from now scuffling sheep. Ow, ow, ow. I feel broken all over. Broken all over. <coughs> Dang it all, driver! Help me! Well, if you'd have behaved yourself and obeyed orders, you would have been fine. But would you listen? <sighs> Alright, I'd better examine you while the guard goes for help. Soon enough, Duke arrived with a crane and a flat truck, and goggled at the mess Stanley was in this time. His driver looked exasperated as he stood by his wailing engine. The damage was worse than usual. Stanley had wrecked his cylinder gear and his wheels were further apart than usual. I don't believe it! I told you to wreck yourself one day, and you didn't listen, did you? The foolish engine was rocking and breathing. We slammed on the brakes to slow him down, but he just derailed. And it tore his frames apart. I mean, I know these wartime engines weren't built to last long and were built on the cheap side, but this just takes the biscuit for shoddy engineering if ever I've seen it! I have no sympathy for you, Stanley. It is, after all, your fault. We tried to help you, and you ignored it. I can only hope the manager would be more merciful than to send you off for scrapping. Stanley slumped there, looking for Lorne. Duke couldn't help feeling sorry for him. After he'd been hoisted onto a flat truck, Duke pulled him to the works, but the manager was waiting. Good job, Duke. You may go and have a rest. You deserve it after all this. Now, what to do with you? I'm sorry, sir. I, I really am. Nothing that can't be fixed, eh? I'll be as good as new in no time. <laughs> Why am I the only one laughing? Of course, Stanley, we still have a place for you here. But frankly, your recklessness has caused heavy damage which we can't afford to repair. But I do have an idea on how to make you useful. Don't worry about that. You're not implying what I think you are, sir, are you? Well, we've always needed better ventilation for that shed. We'll serve a better purpose in a new role, Stanley. No coming off the rails for you anymore. No, no. In fact, you needn't be on them at all. Sir, uh, what did you have in mind? Oh, you'll see, my rail-slipping friend. You'll see. <laughs> the very next morning, the engines watched as Stanley's cabin wheels were taken away, aghast. Duke remained stoic about the affair, even as he watched one of the mine engines push the remains of Stanley to the back of the shed and operate the crane to lift Stanley's remains into his new home. <laughs> I warned you. Still, you got off a lot lighter than I expected. Goodbye, young'un. In years to come, Duke would use the story of Stanley's downfall to teach the younger engines how not to misbehave, as Sir Handel and Peter Sam knew all too well. Blimey, that was a horrid story! But it was the truth, young'un. Details and all now, mind you. Let it be a lesson to you. Always try and do your best, no matter what your background or circumstances are. A lesson some of us nearly didn't learn. Oh, let it go, will you? That was a long time ago. Steady on, you. If we hadn't, well, who knows where the back of the should be be? Mike and Sir Handel stared at each other, still stunned by what had happened to Stanley. Mike was looking very unsure of himself and Sir Handel hastily departed for his first train.
<laughs> Always work a charm, stun them into silence, and give an old engine some quiet time to do in the sun. <laughs>